45 degrees. So I'm going to roll her back this way, and that's what I was saying a minute ago. Depending on the size of your patient, you may need to put the sponge really far under or about halfway. Another thing that you need to learn to keep the shoulder and the hip at the same plane, sometimes we have to do this. Because the boudé, you know, <laughs> not that you have a line, but oh, no, you know, it'll push the hip up more. So when you put the patient lateral, it's okay if you have them flex their knee a little bit here and keep this leg straight, but that pulls on the back. I mean, this would probably be really hard for me to hold this position because I'm a bad back. But you don't want both knees flexing up like this because watch what happens. See how it rotates the patient up more? They're no longer 45 degrees. So you want to look at the hip and the shoulder here and make sure that they're both in the 45 degree plane. Even though we're not doing this body part yet, I'm this in this new section of spine work, this is one of the hardest concepts people seem to have, is how to do an oblique on the table. And some of you were challenged with that today, having to do the ribs on the table, because you've all been practicing up front, right? Okay. We don't usually do hips on um, pelvis standing. Sometimes they do. Why, why would they do it standing? What's that disease you look for? DHC? Yeah, DJD. Oh, DJD. What did you say? O D H D. I said O lipo and then DHD. DJD, degenerative joint disease. Okay, so she got kind of crooked on me, and it's almost easier just to do this than to try to scoot her hips, scoot her shoulders. That happens a lot when you rotate patients. Okay, so again, I'm going to find the top of the iliac crest here, put the light above the iliac crest, and then. Remember, as you're rotating the patient, the pelvis, the spine is going to stay left posteriorly because whatever soft tissue they may have is just going to come anteriorly. So we basically want the CR halfway between the um, MSP and the MCP here. And another way we can gauge that, I'll show you in the L spine uh, next week, but or later. Put your arm down. Okay, turn your head towards me. Okay. Does this line up with your ear? Yeah? Over just a little bit, right? Yeah, she's still crooked here, I can tell. Your, your pelvis is your body still. So this would be crosswise. Uh, so it's 14 percent. by 17 crosswise because we're still doing a pelvis. So what's happening now? What patient position is she in? RPO. RPO. So what happens to the wings? So it elongates the wing that's down, right? The iliac crest. And it also shows the, the cap of the acetabulum on the left. So this can be taken, the RPO can be taken for the right iliac wing or the left acetabulum. So you'll notice sometimes they just center over the acetabulum of the upside, but typically we do GJs to include both sides. This is very common or was very common at Santa Monica, and I'll show you some films or you'll see some on the image critique where they have these surgeries where they move like half a person's pelvis. I guess they had bone cancer or something, but they, I mean, you, you would look at them, you would never know, and, you, and then you take an x-ray and half their pelvis is going to move. Okay, so this is the Jude, the RPO, and then, of course, we do the LPO. And typically, if you're going to do, do, do Jude's, you have to do both sides. Scoot over towards me just a little bit. Okay. I don't want to step oh, on that. Oh, okay. Uh, I'll move it, because I think I'm done with it anyway. Thank you. out a little bit. Okay, so again, I'm finding the iliac crest here. And see, we we don't need to be way over here. See, she doesn't have pelvis there. That's soft tissue. See that? See? I got lots of room over here. <laughs> so I want to make sure my light's miss between the MSP and the MCP. I'm going to show you a little trick with the L-spine, how we use the ACEs to also find this landmark here when we get to the L-spine. So turn your head. See how the line lines up with their earlobe? That's a good gauge. And you can have patients that you know have this mass of abdomen, and your light's going to look like this. And you want to open your light up, but you can't because your IR is going to be what it is. It looks small because the patient's you know, soft tissue's up closer. Okay. So you said this is LPO? This is LPO. So what are we demonstrating? Um, the left, um, iliac one? Right, so the left 
Oh, correct. The left iliac wing and the right acetabulum. Okay. All right. Okay, let's go ahead and turn up. Perk it up. And if one of you guys back there, Sean, can you grab that 